All right, global weather, day one. This is chapter six, lesson two, page 234. So name, class or period, date, just like on our Avid Cornell notes sheets, topic or objective, science F and T, chapter six, lesson two, page 234. Use your blue pen, global weather, matches the blue of the title, global weather. Then our main idea essential question in blue, main idea essential question in blue. <clears throat> Copy it exactly. Read it with me. Global weather patterns are influenced by many factors, including the distribution of air pressure and Earth's rotation. Okay, vocabulary. Climate is page 236, so flip to 236. Climate describes the average weather conditions in an area over a long period of time. Average weather in area over long time. Notice the little indentation so you can tell that this goes together with that one word. Next one, Coriolis effect. Say that, Coriolis effect. Okay, there it is right there. Go backwards. This effect is called the Coriolis effect. Well, what effect? Uh, instead, they curve. Okay, something about curving. Keep going backwards. Because Earth spins on its axis, winds do not blow in straight lines. Instead, they curve. This effect is called the Coriolis effect. And here's a diagram of what it might look like. So, Coriolis effect, winds curve due to Earth's spin. Capitalize the E, apostrophe, because it's Earth's spin. Jet stream, page 235. Jet streams are narrow belts of high-speed winds in the upper troposphere. We haven't actually learned about the troposphere in this book. Basically, it's just a very high altitude part of the atmosphere. Way up there, almost up to outer space. And here's a diagram of what jet streams might look like on any given day. So, jet stream, narrow belt of high-speed wind in upper atmosphere. I changed it to atmosphere because we haven't learned about the troposphere yet. Ocean current, page 236. An ocean current is a constant moving stream of ocean water. Constant moving stream of water. Okay, here's a diagram of ocean currents, but also remember how we've learned about convection currents, both in the mantle with the magma, causing plate tectonics and, and shifts in the plates, but also we learned about it in previous lessons for water and air, and that's what creates the winds blowing. Okay, global wind patterns. Use your red pen. Global wind patterns. As you have read, the sun's uneven heating of Earth's surface causes differences in air pressure. Okay, you should be reading with me. Read with me. Winds are part of the convection currents that form as a result. Because Earth spins on its axis, winds do not blow in straight lines. Instead, they curve. This effect is called the Coriolis effect. It causes winds to curve clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. Okay, out of that paragraph, what do we need? Sun's uneven heating causes differences, air pressure, which causes winds, which causes convection currents. Okay, remember that the sun heats the earth unevenly, so you get differences in air pressure, so you end up with wind, which causes these convection currents. Okay, also, earth spins, causes curves wind, Coriolis effect. So the earth spinning causes the wind to curve, and that is called the Coriolis effect. Okay, did they talk about the wind belts yet? No. Okay, so let's keep going. Long-lasting air pressure patterns at Earth's surface are responsible for planetary wind belts. These are large regions that experience persistent winds. Wind belts in the northern hemisphere are generally a mirror image of those in the summer, southern hemisphere. Note that these belts show general wind patterns. On any given day, the actual winds might be quite different. Okay, so here's a picture of that. So what they're saying is, in general, these trade winds near the equator tend to blow in that direction. And the ones up here 
above the 30 degree line tend to blow that way, and then above the 60 degree line tend to blow that way. Now on any given day it could be a little bit different, but if you average things out over months and years, this is the general pattern, or um, like what keeps repeating over time. Okay, and then you can see the curving happening. Then you can also see the mirror effect. If the zero degree line, the equator, is the mirror, then whatever's happening in the north is mirrored by the south, and vice versa. Up and to the right, down and to the right, it's like a mirror. Okay, let's look here. Wind belts equal general patterns. Good morning. The wind belt around the equator is called the doldrums. The doldrums is a warm region of rising air, low air pressure, and very little wind. Rain may fall every afternoon. Okay, so that's this area in the red arrows. That's the doldrums. Large areas of high pressure exist at 30 degrees north and south latitude. So right along the 30 degree line and right along this 30 degree line, those are those areas of high pressure. Here, cool air sinks towards Earth's surface. Some of this air moves across the surface toward the equator, some moves toward the poles. The winds that blow toward the equator are called trade winds. These steady winds powered sailing ships on trading voyages between Europe and the Americas. So way back in history, people from Europe would get out on a boat and they'd start sailing and the trade winds would carry them a little bit south and west and that's how they ended up in the Caribbean islands. And then to get back home, they would follow these green westerlies to get back home. Okay, so in red, because it's red in our picture, trade winds equal warm, zoop, steady. That's what they said here, right? Steady and they are warm. They told us warm up here. It's the equator, so obviously that's going to be warm. Okay, winds between 30 and 60 degrees latitude are called westerlies. They blow in the opposite direction to the trade winds. They blow less steadily than the trade winds. Okay, so westerlies equal cooler, zoop, less steady. Use your pencil. So they are cooler than trade winds and they are less steady meaning they'll blow, but then maybe after a few days or a couple weeks, they won't blow, and then they'll blow again, and it's kind of like this on-again, off-again type of thing. The trade winds seem to blow pretty steadily. The westerlies, not as much. The polar easterlies blow from high-pressure regions near each pole to about 60 degrees latitude north or south. So it's blowing from the pole down towards the 60 line, or from this pole up towards the 60 line. These winds tend to vary quite a bit in direction and speed. Okay, polar easterlies in blue vary. We're using blue because that's the color on this picture and it's gonna help our mind associate what's going on. Polar easterlies vary. That means they change quite often. Jet streams are narrow belts of high-speed winds in the upper troposphere. They generally move from west to east, west to east, in both hemispheres but can shift northward or southward, developing big loops. Okay, so they tend to blow from the west to the east, but they can move up and down and become wavier. They can move up to the north and down to the south and be in these big loops. Jet streams often affect the movement of high and low pressure systems at Earth's surface. In this way, they can have a steering effect on weather. So depending on how these jet streams move, they change the high and low pressure areas underneath them, and that affects the weather. They can steer the weather into certain places. Jet streams are important to commercial airlines. A pilot can fly faster and save fuel when flying with the jet stream. So if you're going from, say, Los Angeles to Florida, you get your plane way up high in the sky, you catch this jet stream, and it just floats you along, and you don't have to spend as much fuel flying your plane. Okay, so jet stream equals high, zoop, West to east, zoop, steer weather. All right, now for this picture. So give yourself about at least four lines of paper, maybe even more. Draw your big circle to represent the Earth, a big circle, okay? Draw the equator line with arrows 
moving from left to right or west to east. Okay, and label that Earth's spin. So we know the Earth is spinning in that direction. Just like it says here, Earth's rotation is going from left to right. Okay, now go ahead and mark the 30 degree line and the 60 degree line. Come up to the northern hemisphere. Mark that 30 degree line and that 60 degree line. Actually mark the numbers, label them. 30 and 60 degrees, 30 and 60 degrees. And then label a capital N for the northern hemisphere and a capital S for the southern hemisphere. Okay, now over here to the left. Clockwise, start with the dot at the top where number 12 would be. Go to the right and draw a little arrow. That is clockwise, the same way the hands on a clock spin. <laughs> Come down here, counter dash clockwise. C-O-U-N-T-E-R, clockwise. Start at the 12, go to the left. That's the opposite way a clock spins. That's why it's called counterclockwise. Okay, so now you should have your globe, your equator that says Earth spin, your 30 and 60, your 30 and 60, your N, your S, your clockwise, and your counterclockwise. Okay, now, get your red pen because that's going to be the trade winds. Draw some little arrows. You start at the 30 and curve down and to the left. Start at the 30, curve down and to the left. Start at 30, curve down and to the left. For the southern hemisphere, start at the 30, up and to the left. Up and to the left, up and to the left. Your arrows should match those red arrows. Once you're done with that, label them trade winds. Just like it says here, trade winds. Okay, switch to the pencil. We don't have green, so we're going to use our pencil for the westerlies. Starting at the 30 and going up to the 60, it's up and to the right, up and to the right, up and to the right. Same thing down here. Starting at the 30, going to the 60, down and to the right, down and to the right, down and to the right. So it should match these green ones and these green ones in between the 30 and the 60. Those are the westerlies. Label them westerlies. Okay, now get your blue pen, and you're gonna do the polar easterlies. Polar easterlies. You're starting at the pole and coming down to the 60 line. Down to the left, down to the left, down to the left. Same thing here, start at the pole, up to the left, up to the left, up to the left. Label them polar easterlies. So now you notice that this clockwise matches these. That trade wind is kind of going clockwise. The westerly is going in a clockwise. The polar easterly is going in a clockwise. They're all kind of spinning all the same directions. <laughs> counterclockwise. Down here in the south, it's going counterclockwise. That way, that way, and that way. So they all have that same effect. So one more review. The globe, the Earth's spin in the center at the equator, the 30 and 60 lines labeled, the 30 and 60 lines labeled in the south, north is labeled, south is labeled, clockwise is drawn correctly, counterclockwise is drawn, red pin trade winds, just like the picture from the book, Pencil westerlies between the 30 and 60, between the 30 and 60, labeled westerlies. And now blue pen, polar easterlies, pole to 60 and pole to 60. Okay, keep going. We have even more. Ocean surface currents. Ocean surface currents. <clears throat> Oceans cover 70% of Earth's surface. They affect the lands they border in many ways. Most coastal regions experience smaller daily and seasonal changes in temperature than do inland regions. Okay, so the coast has smaller changes, meaning it's more steady. One reason is because the temperature of water changes more slowly than that of land. Another reason is the effect of ocean currents. Remember we talked about how it takes the water four times as much energy to cool up or, or to cool down or to heat up? Well, that helps keep the temperature steady. 
but now they're also telling us that the ocean currents have an effect too. So, coast has smaller daily and seasonal changes. It's more steady, right? We added that part ourselves right there. An ocean current is a constant moving stream of ocean water. All the water in a current has similar temperature and density. Ocean surface currents are produced by the prevailing winds. Like winds, currents curve to the right or left depending on which hemisphere they are in. So look at the picture. There's that counterclockwise, there's that counterclockwise in the south. In the north, it's clockwise, in the north, it's clockwise, all because of the Earth's rotation. Continents force ocean currents to change their direction. Okay, so winds cause the surface currents. They curve similarly. Okay, so the ocean surface currents curve similarly to what? The winds, because we just talked about the winds. Winds are caused by surface currents. Or I'm sorry, winds cause these surface currents and they curve similarly to the winds. That makes sense. If the wind is blowing on the water and causing it to have these currents, then the currents are going to go the same direction as the winds. Now, page 236, that's this image. Page 234, that's that image. Put those two page numbers so that in your mind you can say, ah, this is similar to that. Notice how they're blowing all towards the left at the equator? Well, the waters are all spinning towards the left at the equator, towards the left. Look at all the arrows going to the west. Okay, warm ocean currents carry warm water away from the equator. Cold ocean currents from the poles bring cooler water with them. Okay, good picture of that's gonna be this right here. The warm water rises at the equator, flows that way. It's rising kind of sucks this cool water along this way. So the water flows from the equator up to the pole and then back down. Looks very similar to sea breezes and land breezes, doesn't it? Looks very similar to the convection currents in the aquarium. Looks very similar to the convection currents in the magma, in the plate tectonics. Convection currents. Something you've got to learn because it applies to all these different fluids. The magma, the ocean water, the aquarium, the winds, the atmosphere, and on. Okay, climate describes the average weather conditions in an area over a long period of time. The transfer of heat by ocean currents affects climate. Many places have either warmer or colder climates because of these currents. So, ocean surface currents affect climate. Let's find out how. A warm current called the Gulf Stream brings water from the Caribbean Sea to Northern Europe. Right over here. Okay, oop, sorry, that was Asia, right over here. The Caribbean Sea all the way up here to Europe. Oh, look at how all that red warm water makes its way all the way up here to the cold polar regions. It's because of the Gulf Stream. This is why England, here's England, this little orange spot here, is generally warmer than Nova Scotia. There's Nova Scotia there, close to Maine, almost, it's part of Canada, almost part of Maine and the United States. Even though both are almost equally far north of the equator. Okay, so if you look at their latitude, it's at a pretty similar level. Nova Scotia is very cold because so much of the cold ocean currents comes down from the pole. England tends to be warmer because so much of the Gulf Stream makes it up there and keeps things warm. So example given, England versus Nova Scotia. Why is England warm and Nova Scotia is cold? Because of the Gulf Stream. And just looking at the pictures, you can see, okay, here's Nova Scotia. It's cold, people are wearing jackets, it's rocky. Over here in England, it's like a beach. People are out there having fun in the warm. All right, that was a long one, but that's because we're trying to squeeze this all in and do everything in four days instead of five. So we're learning how to do this faster. Good job persevering with the growth mindset. Roar, Wildcats!